I know we're all human at the end of the day. I wonder what it's like to live as someone who has hate against other ethnic groups and all that. And that made me realize like there are still people out there who is highly like that, who has that belief. Hey guys, it's Angela. Hi, my name is Sanjana. Hi, I'm Kalina. And this is Brian and you're watching Earth Listening. Hi, Brian, you want to introduce what we're talking about today? Yeah. So with the following the recent um, spike in coronavirus, now we also have been experiencing Asian hate among the communities. A lot of cases you've already heard about the Atlanta, Atlanta hate crimes. Now you've heard a lot about Asians getting pushed over, a lot of elderly being attacked. And initially that's what we're addressing for today's topic for podcast. So I'm going to open the uh, floor for anyone who want to start. You guys want to talk about your thoughts? Yeah, I just want to ask the question, like throw it out there. Like, did any of you guys ever experience racism like growing up or especially during the pandemic? Any experiences like that? We kind of like live in a bubble in Cerritos because again, mainly everyone's Asian. So yeah, not personally, no. Yeah. I have heard racist, racist comments towards me. Like when I was in elementary school, I like you, I didn't realize it was until like later on like somebody like it was about my hair and I was like oh wow okay I kind of took it off as a compliment and then later on I realized that was a complete insult <laughs> I told my mom and I was like like I didn't reply it was a teacher too <laughs> it was something about my hair it was like oh your hair looks like a horse tail Oh and you know a student like in like a really young student would be like oh my gosh oh okay like you don't you don't expect the teacher to like insult you so I was like oh is that a like in my mind I'm like oh that's a good thing <laughs> and then I tell my mom she's like what and like my mom being an immigrant she doesn't want to say anything because you know so yeah. now I'm just like why did I just pass it off as like that why didn't I say something right. but yeah I feel like I feel like when you said like it looks like a horse tail, it sent mixed feelings. I felt like maybe it was like it's for for an um, elementary school kid. It might seem like a compliment, but then I mean, now that we're more now that we changed and all that, we're more mature. We definitely found out there are a little bit of like little loopholes in that statement. It feels it feels like a compliment, but it could very well be passed off as a, also a racist comment too. So yeah, I still like I'm like oh that's still a compliment, and then I like I process it. I'm like. Because you expect a teacher to say right. something like, right, you don't expect, like, especially in like, this community. Yeah. So then I like put more time into thinking about it. And I'm just like, that is not right at all. Mm. There's no way you can say that to somebody, but yeah. too late. Personally, for me, since I've never experienced like racism or like never remembered having like racist experiences, like when I realized or when I saw on the news, like even a year ago, that like, oh, Asian hate crimes or like Asian, like, discrimination is increasing or like violence against Asian Americans um are like happening around the country I was like I was like wow like that's actually a thing you know like mm. that never really like I never really knew that was reality because I never like personally seen it um even within the past year I know violence has been occurring here and there but like it never like like it never sunk or seen yeah it never like like I didn't really realize like wow that's real until like the Atlanta shooting where like I actually saw like these Asian women were killed and like that was like my like epiphany where I realized like wow like this is actually reality and this is like what is going on towards our Asian community yeah what are your guys's thoughts about like like the Atlanta shooting, did it like have a sudden like realization to you guys? For me personally, there was a video going around. Um, I think last March or like the beginning of quarantine of um a lot of hate crimes against um like old Asian like there was this one video of people just beating up an Asian man just because he was Asian and because of the coronavirus. And I feel like watching that video was really when I realized that stuff like this happens. Definitely. For me too, I think I, I didn't know it was so prominent until I saw videos of it like Helena. And 
it kind of made me question the, the uh, audacity of people. Like, I wonder what it's like to live as someone who has hate against other ethnic groups and all. And that made me realize, like, there are still people out there who is highly like that, who has that belief. Um, for me, my response to, like, the Atlanta shooting, honestly, um, at first it was numb. Like, I felt numb. Like, I, I didn't really feel anything. I was like, like, I think I was, it was still in the, like, disbelievement stage where I was like wow that actually happened like I like I'm still like trying to process and digest like this was reality that uh, a shooter a white shooter killed eight people and like out of the eight of them seven of, sorry six of them were Asian women and like he deliberately went to like these Asian marketed spas um, to kill them and then he blamed it on his like sexual addiction and like like fetishized, fetish size, sorry, I can't pronounce the word, like Asian woman. And I was like, oh, wow, I was trying, I was trying to like digest it. But then like after like, I don't know, 30 minutes or something, I was going through TikTok and looking at all those like videos that was in response to the shooting. And like, I kind of felt like, I felt angry. Like, like, and especially where I heard the news that the county officer said, oh, he was having a bad day. You know, I was like, like that really like triggered right. me. I was like, like if it was any other man besides like white, um, like African American, Mexican, I don't know, another Asian person, <laughs> we would never see that. Oh, he was having a bad day. Excuse. So like that was really triggering to me. And I was like, wow, he has the audacity to make an excuse to make us feel empathy to a killer, and all that stuff. So, like, oh, that was right. really triggering. Yeah. And I can't even imagine how hard it must be to walk the streets of a probably a more uh, ethnically white neighborhood and then suddenly someone comes up to you and starts beating you up. That's automatically, that's scary, right? Mm -hmm. well, well, we're not in their shoes, so we can't feel it. But for the people there who died, it's definitely, you can imagine the horror they have to go through at that moment before they were shot. And it kind of does scare you a bit to think, wow, like people... This is human, kind of human nature, right? Uh, it's, yeah, it's a little bit scary. And you definitely feel a lot of empathy for these people because they are, it's their race. They didn't, they didn't choose to become Asian. It was born just that way. And they were being targeted for that. I've also heard like another story. Um, one of the people who died was like a 50 year old uh, mother. Um, she came, she immigrated from China. And then like that really, that connected to me because like my mom, was kind of have the same circumstance as her. Like she also came from China and then she's also like in her fifties, um, early fifties. And then like, you know, like all that stuff. And I was like, wow, like that could have been my mom. Like if we were living there, you know, and it's like, it's crazy. Yeah, I feel like that whole aspect was what really got me too, because um, like also I don't exactly look Asian, I guess. You know, I could pass for just white you know, because I'm only really um, half Filipino and a quarter Japanese, but what really gets me is just, like, thinking about, like, my grandma, what are, like, whether, if my grandma was there, what would happen, or just, like, my mom, you know, just thinking about that whole part. Yeah, I feel like I don't even fall into, like, that category of Asian, just because I don't look Asian, like, pertain, like, the general stereotype, but then, like, the whole thing of Black Lives Matter, I don't fall into that. Even though I'm Asian, I don't look Asian. And even though I'm a person of color, I don't fall into the category of person. It's just very confusing. I'm just like, where do I put myself? But when I saw that, I was like, oh, well, do I pertain to that or do I not? So it was just a little confusing for me. Yeah, I think you bring up a really good point. Like, I feel like even today, there's like a common like stereotype of like Asians are just like Chinese, Japanese, Korean. And like, it doesn't take into account like Indians, um, like Southeast people or like Central East Asian, Central Asian, Asia, um, or, like Vietnamese, Cambodian, Thailand, um, Indonesian, all that like types of Asians, but yeah. Yeah. I definitely also see that too. I feel like, <clears throat> um, because we live in America, most of the posts you see on Instagram are geared towards Americans, but there's also um, hate crime against uh, other minority groups like um, Angela said, like the Central Asian, those type. 
but I feel like we don't really recognize that a lot. Mm -hmm. I feel like the shooting was geared towards like Chinese or like just Asian, um, like the good the Korean, Japanese, Chinese are long held group of Asian people, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I think this like gets into a good transition into like the model minority myth. Like personally, I've never really like to like honestly to be frank, that this is like kind of a new term for me. I've heard it here and there, but I never really understood like what it meant. But like just to get a gist of it, it's basically, I think from my research, like it's about like saying, oh, Asian, the Asian community is like hardworking people, they're highly educated. And like, so the other minorities should be able to like look and be like Asians and like be as hardworking as them. Like, oh, if Asians can do it, then like you guys should do it too. And then like, I see the problem where like it kind of alienates and like isolates um, like people of color because it's just like kind of like I've seen like a TikTok video where like that one Asian was like saying like oh white people are basically like separating um, like African Americans with Asians because of this model minority and then it just creates like a divide between people of color which there really shouldn't be a divide like I feel like we're all like minorities we all face some sort of like discrimination as we're like maneuvering our way through America and like there really shouldn't be a divide in that yeah. yeah, it sucks. Okay. Um, reflecting upon what Angela said, think if we kind of think back a few months, we had, we campaigned for Black Lives Matter, right? There was a lot of Blacks, um, Black people that were, were hated against. Now there was police, also issues with police. And now Asians are being targeted. Well, then what's next, right? Hispanics are going to be targeted, like certain more ethnic groups. I feel like, yeah, again, there is this divide. Um, and I also think that I don't think the minority, the, the model minority myth should even really exist. I think it's a little bit unfair to other people because when you character, ca categorize, ca when you categorize an Asian as someone who's hardworking, that you might have expectations for that person. And once you see an Asian like playing video games or doing something that they shouldn't be doing, it makes you feel like, oh, they're not actually like being a model minority. And that kind of creates like a little bit of a, um, it kind of, it's a bit uncom uncomfortable to think about, I feel like, yeah. Yeah, I agree with like the whole model minority thing. And it's also like, if you think about it, I feel like it's um, ingrained just to like, for Asians to be a certain way from, you know, even kid TV shows. Like for example, I was watching this one video on the whole model minority trope and like an example of, um, one of those characters is Ravi from Jesse, mm -hmm. and it's like how he's always the smartest one, and you know he talks a certain way out of all the kids. And I feel like if you really pay attention to like all the other shows you grow up watching, they're really prevalent examples of how it influences us, and yeah, how it makes us see Asians or like any sort of minority. Um, that said, there is also this one saying, like, uh, people turn Asians into an aesthetic. I don't know why mm. people would do that, but, like, I don't know how, I don't know what the deal is and all. Is it because, like, the way we dress, um, the, our habits and all our culture, but some people turn it into aesthetic, and it makes it seem a little bit, like, uh, it's a bit questionable, I feel like. Also, on a more, like, transparent note, um like after like just learning and reading from the media about like these like violence against Asians did you guys ever like feel fearful or like did you guys like want to like carry like I don't know self-defense stuff with you guys if you guys haven't already or like any other stuff like that I'll go first just to get like the ball rolling but recently my dad and I went to Walmart and then like usually we would just like I would stay in the car and he would go because, like, he doesn't really want me to go in there and, like, maybe, like, get the virus or anything. Like, expose, increase the risk of, like, having multiple people going. Um, so I just say, like, I usually just stay in the car and, like, he goes. Um, and then recently, it was actually this past weekend, we went to Walmart again. And then, like, as usual, I was going to stay in the car. But then, like, it was just, like, the thoughts of, like, just circling around about the violence. And even, like, that day, um, one of, like, my classmates said, like, during, in Lakewood, there was, like, a car that ran over, like, two girls or something like that, so, like, it was pretty local, um, and then if you guys know more details, you guys can add on later, but, like, it was just, like, these thoughts, like, wow, this is happening locally, like, all that stuff, and the land of shooting, 
it was just in my head and then uh we went to the parking lot and my dad was gonna park in like a shady area because it was pretty sunny um and I didn't want the car to get hot and then like um we parked besides another car and it was like pretty shady it's like okay and then like I turned around looked at my right and there was a man in the car and like I don't want to be like I don't know like offensive or anything but I just like suddenly got scared and I was like I was like thinking really extreme like oh my gosh what if my dad leaves and then he comes and he like smashes the window open and like like I don't know punches me or something like that I know that's completely like probably really extreme but like it like it got me scared and I was like I was telling my dad like oh I don't feel safe right now and then so like we moved to another spot where it's like there was like no like there was like cars like away but then it was kind of like not like really that much people going on around um and I felt safe that way but like it's sad because like most likely the man meant no harm he was just looking at so you know he was chilling but like it's just sad like how like you have to kind of be fearful like with all the things going on like you can't like you feel like you can't really trust anyone like even walking down the street you're like oh is that person gonna like punch me when he comes near me or like stuff like that so I think that's pretty like really sad and it's completely un like unfair like any people who have to like go through that um go through the like the fear of like just walking outside and having the fear like what if I get hurt or what if like someone punches me or something or even like worse like what if I get killed like that is very like sad like for anyone who has to go through that it's completely unfair like very unfortunate yeah definitely yeah. I feel like when we read about it, it's one thing, but to be in it, it's a different thing. Like um, me personally, I've never really felt fearful. If it happened, I probably would have been been traumatized. But um, yeah, I, I know Surreal's is a pretty safe neighborhood. People wear on, put on their masks. People abide by um, abide by the community and all that, and they they think about the community. But it's also at the same time, yeah, I think. It could happen anytime for all we know. Maybe you're just an unfortunate one to come on a certain day at this certain time to this certain location. And then wham, all of a sudden people gang up on you. And it's something you definitely didn't see coming until it really happens. So yeah, it's just smart to be cautious and to, you know, just be prepared in any way. Going back to what Angela said about carrying a defense weapon, let's say hypothetically, if you were um, attacked by white people or just any people in general for your race and you brought that defense weapon us pepper spray so be it what um, what have you if the cops came there is a good chance you might be blamed for bringing a weapon when it was someone who assaulted you there could be a good um there could be that again that racist kind of a uh, way of dealing with the problem oh you're asian you're carrying a weapon whereas if someone carried a gun they probably well very, very well pass off as like innocent right oh he was having a bad day for Asians, oh, they carried a weapon out, you know, it could very well happen, we don't know. So uh, another way to pin out the inequality and um, weapon control and everything. So yeah. Topic of racism is not new. Think about how we've been dealing it, dealing for, for centuries. And we're learning AP, like US, for those of you who are learning US history, you guys hear that Asian sentiment, like that anti Native sentiment has been around even, you know, remember during the gold rush, right? When Asians flock over to California to search for opportunities, there was still hate among them too. So I feel like this has been going on for centuries. And while we do, we have been making a bit of progress, there's still a lot of way we need to pay for the future. So we can try to cut down on this issue so that it becomes more obsolete. I feel like overall, everyone just needs to be more empathetic, whether it be like, regardless of any race you are, just be empathetic about the other person and like try to think about um, how they are like in their shoes. I mean, of course you can't know their full story um, and their full circumstances, but try to understand like, I know we're all human at the end of the day. We're all like trying to be in a pursuit of happiness, trying to live a happy life, you know, be with friends and family, make the best of our lives, but yeah. Um, and then also just to like, you know, disclaimer, uh, we're not saying all white people are like that. It's really just about like the, honestly, all these hate crimes are like the, I don't know if it's like minority, but it's like very like extreme points in the overall like graph of people. Um, but like, that's just, it, it sucks because like, it feels like we can't trust anybody because we can't be 
too not cautious like we need to be cautious about our safety which makes us like have to like be wary of everyone even though we obviously know like not everyone um like our races and all that stuff but yeah it sucks that there are like these problems going on it's not new it's just like brimming until like suddenly and right now it exploded where everyone um kind of like wow like really came out of the surface and like it sucks because I feel like the Atlanta shooting didn't really need to happen because a lot of Asian influencers have been like calling out for support. They're like saying, oh, we are getting like, we're getting punched, we're getting like jumped on, all that stuff. Like more people need to speak out, but like it didn't reach that much media attention until the Atlanta shooting, which sucks. But yeah, at the end of the day, just be more empathetic, be more understanding. Yeah. So thank you for listening to our podcast. I remember also reading this one quote that I was like, um, I don't know. It's like value our race just as much as you value our culture. So if people find this whole Asian thing and it's like, then that's fine. There's no shame in that. Just respect us as people then. You know, if you respect the things we do, our culture in general, then why can't you have respect for us too? So just a quick takeaway. Um, but yeah, thank you for listening to our podcast. Um, Earth, the Earth is me off air. And uh, just remind you to be more kind to yourself and also kind to other people. Yeah. Love you. Bye, guys. Hola. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Check us out on Instagram at Earthlinking Official. Check out our website on Instagram located in a link in our bio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Earthlinking Team. Donate to our GoFundMe located in the description box below. This is Earth Listening. See you in the next episode.